There's over 100 levels in Super Mario 3D World, a lot of them filled with charm, fun music, deep gameplay, and exciting secrets. I'll be ranking every level based on how fun and how in-depth they are. So with all that said, let's get her ranked! 116, Fire Bros Hideout Number 1. Yep, we're even including these levels for the ultimate definitive ranked video. You squash three Fire Bros, enough said. 115, Magikoopa Blockade. It's the same idea, but you destroy three Magikoopa. Even the stage layout is exactly the same. 114, Fire Bros Hideout Number 4. Okay, just hear me out, alright? There's a reason we skip from 1 to 4. You fight even more Fire Bros for some extra challenge. That's it. 113, Fire Bros Hideout Number 3. It's almost the same as Hideout 4, but there's some Hammer and Boomerang Bros for variety. I know, crazy curveball the game's thrown at us. Woo! 112, Fire Bros Hideout Number 2. This is probably the hardest hideout level simply because the Fire Bro is on top of the Goomba stack. If you got the cat suit, it's not too bad, or you can use the rising platforms on the sides. 111, Big Galoomba Blockade. Galoomba may be big, but that never stood in my way, especially since you're able to ground pound these two in the middle to make this fight an absolute joke. 110, Charge and Chuck Blockade. Take out the football fellas like the real gamer you are. I'm only placing this higher because they're slightly more annoying to deal with. 109, Charge and Chuck Blockade is back. Yup, it's the same thing, but with even more Chuck fellas. Truly groovy. 108, Prince Bully Blockade. This shiny boulder isn't terribly difficult, but it's more fun than the other fights. At least with the cat suit. You just swipe him to a pipe and boom, he turns into toothpaste. 107, Prince Bully Blockade is back. Quite literally the same fight as before, but now the bully can breathe fire. With that said, you'll likely never notice since he takes like three months to charge his fire attack. 106, Brolder Blockade. It's the last blockade fight. You take some boulders and throw them into the lava. It's a somewhat fun time, except for Bethaniel who hates this level for some reason. 105, Rammerhead Reef. We finally made it to an actual level, and unfortunately, this one isn't very refreshing. I don't know why platforming games have this obligation to make water levels when they're never fun, but here we are. All you really do is swim around slowly and wait for the Rammerheads to move. And one of the green stars is so stupid here. You literally can't access it unless you have a Fire Flower. And it's not like it's challenging to get, it's just annoying when you don't realize this until you're halfway through. 104, Mystery House Marathon. As someone that enjoys, the Mystery House is a nice little break from the game. The last one you have to do is f***ing sadistic. We're supposed to get 30 of these green stars without checkpoints, mistakes, and under a strict time limit. Granted, a lot of the individual challenges aren't that hard, but a handful of them are, which sucks when you make a mistake. And the sheer length makes it very easy to choke and mess up, too. 103, Cosmic Cannon Cluster. You'll use a cannon box to take out dry bones and hit switches. While I like the beginning, the middle and end are painful. The water section is just two minutes of waiting around. You're not gonna get hit by anything as long as you've got the cannon box. And the end has this obnoxious switch that you have to hit in order to move forward. It's at the most awkward angle to aim at. It's just the worst. 102, Deep Water Dungeon. It's another water level, but at least it tries something new. The water rises up and down, and you have to move with it to proceed. While I like the concept, it's still sluggish to play. 101, Coin Express. Why this level exists is beyond me, but it's essentially a hidden bonus stage with hundreds of coins. If you really like collecting coins, then I guess this is for you, but there's no enemies or pits or any sort of challenge, and coins don't even matter when maxing out your live counter can be done in the second level of the game. 100, Pipeline Boom Lagoon. I don't know why this stage has a relaxing aura to it, but that's the only reason I tolerate it. It's more swimming through water and tediously avoiding Rammerhead slash Spike Cubes. 99, Pipeline Lagoon, the OG version. Either level could be interchanged as it's almost the same. Instead of Rammerheads, however, you gotta avoid Cheap Cheeps and Porky Puffers. 98, Spooky Seasick Wreck. Well, I wouldn't really call it spooky, but this level is kind of a wreck. A lot of the focus is on the bullies. You even have to clear two of them for a green star. This is either an okay or tiring experience. Without a power-up, the bullies can take forever to knock off the ship just because of their wonky hitboxes. And there's a water section in the middle because, huh, oh, we all love those. 97, Bowser's Bullet Bill Brigade. Ah, yes, the auto-scrollers. I wouldn't call these bad per se, but they can drag on. We get a boom-boom fight at the end, but that's not saying much because... It's Boom Boom. 
96. Bowser's bob Brigade. As you'd expect, it's the same idea but with harder enemies like Hammer Bros and bob -Ohms. The stage is slightly more enjoyable for that reason. 95. The Bowser Express. Wow! Another train auto-scroller! But now the camera is angled horizontally. I do like the swinging spikes and compartment at the end. It's a nice punch of originality. 94. The Bullet Bill Express. And they aren't kidding about that. Bullet Bills careen all around you. Even Bonsai Bills fly into the scene. I gotta say, I'm glad this auto-scroller has some actual tension. That makes it the best of the bunch. 93. Floating Fuzzy Time Mine. This really seems like one of those out-of-idea kind of levels. It's another auto-scroller, but you're forced to swim through cubes of water. The water is simply slower than using the cloud and tilting platforms from before. 92. Brolder Blockade is back. You just fight the Brolder Man by throwing boulders at him when he isn't spinning. It's a fun enough fight, but there's no actual level to play. 91. Motley Boss Blob's Big Battle. Yup, the big metal clown has rolled into town, and he wants to step on us. We're not into that, however, so just run around and smack the actual clown hiding inside him. It's a creative enough fight. 90. Motley Boss Blob's Encore. Oh yes, the same boss battle, but now he spews golden rings after every jump. I actually really like this since it makes the fight a bit more engaging. 89. A Banquet with Histocrat. I freaking love Histocrat's song. It genuinely makes the fight better for the mood it puts you in. All you really do is climb up a snake and jump on his head three times, but that song it goes with is such a goddamn bop. 88. Histocrat returns. And now he or she is pink and spraying fireballs on the ground. The fire is easy to avoid, but it's better than virtually no obstacles. 87. A Beam in the Dark. So this level is mostly an auto-scroller, but at least it tries to give you something to do. The circle is spinning around and you have a light box to zap away the boos and peepos. 86. Grumblump Inferno. Grumblump tilts across the lava, and you'll stand on him without falling. While it can be scary and exhilarating at certain moments, it's also a slog, even when ground-pounding Gumblump for extra speed. 85. Captain Toad takes a spin. I'm a fan of the Captain Toad levels. I even bought Treasure Tracker twice because you only live once. You push the P-Switch to rotate the level, and it's a fine enough mechanic. The level was a bit clunky because of it, but only a little. 84. Piranha Creeper Creek After Dark. About half of the original level is what you get, plus a million stumps to light with fireballs. If you're not going for green stars, this stage is eh, honestly pretty forgettable. If you are going for green stars, then you're going to loathe in suffering. There are so many stumps to hit, and the accuracy you need for some of them while dealing with the spinning platforms and the poison and the piranha plants can be the worst. 83. Simmering Lava Lake. Lava go up, lava go down. That's the name of the game, and a couple of green stars are a pain to grab if you aren't equipped with the right character or power-up. 82. Fuzzy Time Mine. Yet another auto-scroller, but at least there's more motivation to make progress. Fuzzies lurk from behind, and you'll traverse several types of platforms. Some tilt side to side, some try to crush you on impact. 81. Captain Toad's Fiery Finale. If I were ranking the Wii U levels, I would probably place this higher. If you're playing on the TV, you need to use the gyro button to tap the platforms up, which isn't nearly as precise as the gamepad. 80. Captain Toad Goes Forth. The very first level. It looks really nice and introduces the concept perfectly. It's too bad the blowing platform from the Wii U is replaced with the automatic yellow ones, but oh well. 79. Captain Toad makes a splash, and a very small one at that since he can't jump. The course is more intricate, and the water isn't the worst since you're just walking on the ground the whole time. 78. Captain Toad plays Peekaboo, one of the most involved Captain Toad levels. You'll use touch blocks to lift yourself up to reach other areas. You've also got ghosts to take out with your flashlight if you want, but I like damage boosting through them because it's faster. 77. Captain Toad gets thwomped. This has to be the best Captain Toad level of them all. So many interesting predicaments to work your way through like thwomps, bullet bills, conveyor floors, etc. I also love how you'll use the top of thwomps as platforms too. 76. Mystery House Melee. The first of many mystery houses. The theme here is destroying enemies in any way you can. It's pretty hilarious if you've got the cat suit, since a lot of these enemies can be taken out in a matter of one cat swipe for just a couple seconds. 75. Big Bounce Byway. Bouncing is a factor, I can't deny that. And it's also pretty fun. The only downside is at the end. There's a massive bouncy platform that you just wait on. No, like seriously, the only obstacle is some bitty buds. Otherwise, you're doing almost nothing for like a minute. 74. Backstreet Bustle. This takes the record for world's smallest Mario 3D World level. You're supposed to use the double cherry to get around and use the lifts, but it's completely unnecessary since you can just make good jumps. The ability to break this level so hard makes it more enjoyable. 
73, Pretty Plaza Panic. Speaking of small levels, I'd say this one is a bit better just because it looks nicer and the platforming is more engaging. You can chase a bunny around and there's more piranha plants vibing about. 72, Peepa's Fog Bog. A bit of a weird stage we got here. You start by exploring this small snow section, finding a bunch of key coins. After that, you enter this poison log section, which also has a bunch of fog, and the platforms go in and out of existence. Maybe it's just me, but the fog doesn't really add anything, especially if you already know where to go. 71, Lava Rock Lair. It's your typical castle level, and frankly, one of the most forgettable ones. That's not to say that it isn't fun. I like chucking boulders around, but that's only fun for so long. 70, Mystery House Mad Dash. And that's what you do. Every section has you running through a mini stage to some capacity. I really like the pacing with this stage, and the progression of difficulty ramps up nicely. 69, Mystery House Claw Climb. The next Mystery House requires you to use the cat suit for each star. I like that there's levels that force you to use the power-ups as it changes the gameplay pretty drastically. 68, Mystery House Throwdown. I really shouldn't have this Mystery House so high up, but it's worth it for the comedy gold. If you grab the baseball with your cursor, you can use that to touch the green stars. So instead of carefully trying to aim your baseball throws like a scrub, just grab the baseball and move in one second. Boom, you're done. You can even close Click the PAL blocks and switch panels. This is actually just, it's so dumb, but I love it so much. It's best mystery house ever. 67, Bowser's Lava Lake Keep. One of the most involved Bowser levels. It's like the developers were having a bad day and decided to put the green stars in hard spots because of it. And you know what? I really like that. It's nice to be stimulated every once in a while. 66, Boss Blitz. The title says it all. You'll fight all the different bosses in one big marathon. I do appreciate the strict timer as it forces you to play well and adds a sense of excitement. 65, Bowser's Highway Showdown. While short, it's really sweet with lots of bombs and stacked Goombas. It's also the first time you run into your local pimp Bowser. I kind of miss this bizarre era of the Koopa King. 64, Rolling Ride Run. Your mileage will vary with the stage depending on what power-ups you've got. With the cat suit, it's an awesome time since you can bypass the rolling platforms and climb the walls. If not, it's a bit slow going and extra wonky on the switch with the extra speed for every character. 63, Typhoo Flurries. Uh, no, this isn't your favorite Oreo Flurry Blizzard from Dairy Queen. Typhoos are massive clouds that blow a lot of steam. The gimmick works well here and requires you to time out when to cross pathways. 62, Chain Link Charge. This is another example of doing an auto-scroller right. With all the gaps and moving grades to jump through, you're always engaged with the level. 61, Cookie Cogworks. The layouts are all cookies and chocolate, and the main concept is the cookies rotate in different shapes and speeds. You'd be surprised how solid of a level this is. 60, Piranha Creeper Creek. We talked about the remake a while ago. The original version is much more fun to do. The level is better lit up, and the green stars are put in better spots. You've even got a hidden warp pipe to travel to World 5 earlier. 59, Ant Trooper Hill. Ants and even more ants slop around in a path, and you'll climb around and through them. The end has us bouncing off Mega Ants, which is a tad boring, but for the most part, the level is well paced. 58, back to Hands-On Hall. I really wish there were more stages with themes unique like this. I love the Japanese aesthetic and using the cursor to open the shoji doors. Some of the enemies are annoying to deal with, but otherwise it's a great level. 57, Hands-On Hall. And now we're at the original. The main difference is the enemies aren't as difficult. Frankly, these two levels can be interchanged depending on the mood and time of day. 56, Switchboard Falls. Yup, there's quite a handful of switchboards. They're interesting to use since you can control which direction you want to go and can even fly off one path to another. 55, Puff Prod Peaks, the ultimate touchscreen based level. It's a little clunky on the switch, but it still works pretty well. You'll tap platforms to move them up and down to get around, some of them packing cool secrets. 54, Super Block Land. They not only nailed the block look, but also the Mario 3D Land look. A bunch of blocks are big, and you gotta find key coins and smack charging chucks around. It's a fun level, but nothing too special. 53, Switch Shock Circus. Finally, another theme that's brand new to the Mario franchise. You'll hit a bunch of switch panels to make progress, and there's a bunch of fuzzlets in your path. 52, Switch Scramble Circus. That's right, it's the original version and has even more level to play. It's pretty fun just like the other one is. Honestly, I'd say it's only better for the extra segments included. 51, Really Rolling Hills. Wow, what a great name for a stage. Truly innovative. But, I mean, they aren't wrong. The hills do be rolling, and the color panel room do be popping. Look at those colors. 
50. Night falls on really rolling hills. It's virtually the same level, but on a tight timer now. I really enjoy the rush of getting clocks while also playing through the level. It's satisfying. 49. Spike's Lost City. I guess the city is no longer lost now that we're here. As you'd expect, there's a lot of spikes rolling down hills, so you just jump around them the best you can. 48. Cakewalk Flip. Flippity tippity, I do say. A lot of the platforms flip between red and blue, adding a fun layer of depth. The third green star is a bit scary since you've got the laser beams to also avoid. 47. The Great Tower of Bowserland. Why does this title name sound so. lame? <laughs> anyway, Bowser Land is mostly just avoiding fire and punching some bullies. You also fight Meowser, which is honestly slightly underwhelming. It's an auto scroller fight where you have to avoid Meowser's attacks. So while it's unique in design, it doesn't feel like much of a climax. 46. Fort Fire Bros. One of the trickier stages. You got a bunch of fire bros to flame out and thwomps to avoid. I enjoy the difficulty and overall blue lava vibe. 45. Faster Fort Fire Bros. Say that five times fast. Faster Fort Fire Bros. Faster Fort Fire Bros. Whoa. While the name says Faster Fort Fire Bros, the gameplay itself isn't sped up, although that would be an interesting idea. The goal is to survive while collecting clocks. It's slightly more fun than the original. 44. Trouble and Shadow Play Alley. I don't really get this remake. You spend most of your time in the shadow, but the only objective is to defeat all the enemies. It feels like this could have been included in the original, but ah oh well, it's actually a lot of fun. 43. Deep Black Jungle Drift. Yet another great way to make auto scrollers. If you've got the cat suit, you can skip most of the level with the greats. The remake is a bit different though, since you're so incentivized to use the light box to take out the booze. 42. Deep Jungle Drift. This is the real deal. No boos or peepas in our path. You just kind of soar across the level and forget you're even playing an auto scroller. It's awesome. 41. Beep Block Skyway. Beep Boop Bam. The platforms fade in and out to the music. I absolutely adore this level concept. The music and gameplay connecting together works so well. 40. Blast Block Skyway. This level is very similar, except the platforms switch much faster. This, of course, is more engaging, so it's a bit better for that reason alone. 39. Plessy's Plunging Falls. Plessy is the most wholesome orange boy that wants to help Mario and his pals get across areas of the game. Oh, we love Plessy! The level itself is pretty basic, but it's a fun time and has a nice slider remix from Mario 64. 38. Footlight Lane. And here's what's worse, you can't see the stage and dry bones are cursed! Haha! <laughs> no, but really, I absolutely love how you have to carefully find where the stage is as you play along. And it's even more fun when you do know the stage layout so you can make really scary jumps. 37. Champions Road. We finally arrived at the infamous 3D World stage. This is a massive gauntlet that commands you to beat several sections without losing a life, as there's no checkpoints anywhere. The hardest part being the end with all the speed boosts and lasers. I'm a huge fan of hard levels like this, but the lack of even one checkpoint is a bit absurd, even though I, I know that's kind of the whole point, but like, come on, not even one? 36. Shifty Boo Mansion. One of the few ghost themed levels that isn't a pain to play. You'll ride around couches, go through paintings, and run across moving floors. You can't really go wrong. 35. Shiftier Boo Mansion. The drain colors add this strange sense of dread, a theme you rarely see on display. It's the same as Shifty Boo Mansion, but a little bit tougher. 34. King Kathunk's Castle. Lots of spikes flip around the level, and you have to jump through them at the correct time. I know it kind of sounds boring, but it strangely works really well. It's too bad the boss is so brain dead easy. 33. Boiling Blue Bully Belt. Seriously, these stage names are so uncreative. My god. I love the level due to the frantic pacing and the platforms coming in and out constantly, but seriously, that name is just the worst. 32. Broken Blue Bully Belt. It's basically the same as the OG, except there's way less platforms to land on, which can only be a good thing, of course. 31. Tricky Trapeze Theater. I was not expecting another circus-themed stage, and I'm not complaining about that either. You'll hop from trapeze to trapeze, and the momentum feels great. 30. Spiky Mount Beanpole. You climb up, up, and once again, up. It's a remake of Mount Beanpole, with the main difference being Spike plastered everywhere. He certainly makes the level harder, but not really in a good way. If you're careful and cautious, he isn't that much of a nuisance, but that also kind of hinders the flow of the level overall. 29. Koopa Troopa Cave. The classic 1-2 underground level that most Mario games are obligated to have. This is a really fun one, and also a great place to max out on lives if that's your thing. I do like how the clear pipes are used to transition from section to section, and there's lots of Koopa bouncing to be had. 
28. Trick Trap Tower One of the most unique takes on a lava level. The main concept is climbing up this tower to get key coins, and then rushing back down as poison gas rushes downward. It is quite the adrenaline rush. 27. Gigantic Seasick Wreck It's actually crazy how much better this remake is compared to the original. The level is basically the same, but with Typhoos trying to blow you around. But lucky for us, there's a few Mega Mushrooms to use, which demolish the Typhoos in one hit. There's something really satisfying about instantly KOing the bullies in Typhoos. It's like, mm, yeah, you, you, get out of here! 26. Honeycomb Starway, or the Galaga version of Mario. The stage is an auto-scroller, and you'll use boomerangs to hit bitty buds and fire plants at a top-down angle. This works remarkably well, and is a very nice change of pace. 25. Honeycomb Skyway. This and Starway could be interchanged easily. I slightly prefer the level design for this level, but it's hardly a different experience. 24. Spiky Spike Bridge. In lots and lots of rain as well. The rain effect adds a lot to what is a dark and gloomy night. The spike bridges either release spikes all at once or individually in a cycle. It's great fun timing out when to jump. 23. Spiky Spike Bridge Sneak. I slightly prefer the remake due to its trickier gameplay. The blue spikes will rise when you move over the spotlight, so you have to be a lot more careful when you're jumping. 22. Towering Sunshine Seaside. For how simple and short this remake is, it packs a lot of goodness. You got 100 seconds to defeat a few Fire Bros, but they're on top of stacked Goombas. The main entree being this middle stack, since there's like 100 Goombas at least. The short timer adds a fun element to this. 21. Sprawling Savannah Rabbit Run. The remake of the Savannah really only features the open world portion, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You still collect the bunnies, and it's a pretty good time. 20. Mount Beam Pull. Climb, swipe, and climb some more. There's lots of vertical transcension, which feels great since you're given the catsuit. 19. Rainbow Run. Holy colors, Batman! The roads are rainbow. The Plessy section has rainbow panels. You can't escape all that dazzling color. What I like about this level is the fact that it combines previous level gimmicks into one. You have these rotating cylinders right next to these trapeze jumps, and it's more challenging than you'd expect, and it's great for that reason. 18. Switch Black Ruins. Switch panel levels are pretty decent, but this one outshines them all. The change in camera angle makes hitting the panels more manageable to hit, whether that be with the cursor or just moving around yourself. 17. Bullet Bill Base. We got another one of these vertical base levels, but this one takes it to the extreme. Almost the entire time you'll be climbing, and conveyors will either let you climb faster or slower. Pair that with all the bullet bills and you've got yourself a slapping good time. 16. Sunshine Seaside. One of my favorite open world-ish stages. You collect five key coins while climbing up clouds, trees, or saving Captain Toad from Bitty Buds. Something about the beach's nature makes this one really great. It reminds me of running around on a beach in real life. 15. Red Hot Run. You know, I was kind of conflicted on how I feel about this one. On one hand, it's very easy to slip up and fall off course, but on the other hand, that's what makes it so cool. By this time in the game, you'll have a good grasp on the controls, and now you're getting pushed to a farther limit. 14. Double Cherry Pass. It's the power-up that was made by accident, and yes, that's actually true. This is another happy-go kind of level. You'll use your clones to spawn in green stars and more easily fight off enemies. 13. Plessy's Dune Downhill. By far the best Plessy level. You'll careen down a massive sand dune and take speed boosts along the way. The level design finally kicks up the difficulty a bit near the end and makes for an enjoyable time. 12. Super Galaxy. You can't go wrong with a Mario Galaxy themed level. You've got the red and blue rotating platforms, the Octoombas, heck, even the Comet Observatory at the end. The level's main gimmick constantly changes and drastically gets harder and harder as well. 11. Shadow Play Alley. Let's face it, we're all fighting our inner shadows right now, and half of the stage takes that idea to the next level. After going through a door, all you can see are shadows of yourself, enemies, blocks, and stars. It's a very different style that most Mario games don't go with, so it's refreshing to play and see. This is another level that's simply fun to run through. 10. The Great Goal Pole. What a twist this level brings. The goal pole is right at the beginning, and then boom, it charges away. This concept could almost be turned into an entire Mario game on its own, because the fun comes down to how quickly you can get yourself to the pole without falling. 9. Gargantuan Grotto. The Mega Mushroom is one of those power-ups that is really cool, but is never that practical in Mario games. That is, until this stage. You'll actually use it to be able to run across water due to your weight, and you can bypass water geysers and smash your way through spikes. For whatever reason, this gives the Mega Mushroom a meaningful usage, which I greatly appreciate. 8. Searchlight Sneak. While it's not much of a stealthy level, it feels like it to some extent. Whenever you go over a spotlight, a barrage of bullet bills fly towards you, and I like the exhilaration that brings to the table, and even some of the stage breaks apart, creating a more pressing feeling. 
7. Snowball Park. What an incredibly happy stage. The music is so chirpy, the snowmen are waltzing around, there's even Goombas and big ice skates. Snowball Park has a really good flow to it. 6. Bob Ohms Below. I can't be the only one that feels like this level was just ported from Mario 3D Land. You'll hit pal blocks, throw Bob Ohms, and run across speed boosts at the end for a nice adrenaline boost. 5. Super Bell Hill. The first level in a video game is the most important, as it demonstrates what you're getting yourself into. Super Bell Hill does a phenomenal job showcasing the cat suit, clear pipes, and even the mega mushroom. The first impression you get from this level is that the adventure eh, probably won't be very difficult, but it's gonna be a damn good time. 4. Conk Door Canyon. Well, it isn't much of a canyon, but there's plenty of conk door to go around. The style of platforming changes constantly, and all flows so naturally. You'll go from jumping off bounce pads, to bridges that move side to side, to skinny pathways, and even sandfalls you can climb up. 3. Clear Pipe Cruise. It took until making this ranked video to realize just how awesome this stage is. For starters, it's extremely memorable due to the sprawling clear pipes. Inside these pipes are fuzzies flying in and out, coins, green stars, and the like. But best of all is you can run on top of the pipes and choose to just not use them if you want. That sense of freedom makes this one a keeper. 2. Sprawling Savannah. I have a strange attachment to this stage. I was really craving a more open world experience with Mario on Wii U, and this is the closest we got to that. There's a massive field to run through, complete with many bunnies to catch. There's something really fun about randomly stumbling onto a level so different in nature compared to the rest. 1. Mount Mustache. Can I really pick anything else? Blending Mario Kart into a platforming level works better than it ever deserved to. You can tell heart was put into this stage as it's the only level with remix Super Mario Kart music. A lot of the slides look like roads, and the constant speed boosts keep you on your toes. Even the walls are colorized just like Super Mario Kart. Well damn, that's a lot of stages. Mario 3D World is pretty much just a collection of levels, but most of them try to focus on a gimmick and expand that idea further. But that's all I got for today. Let me know what your favorite and least favorite levels are in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Ta-ta! Um, hey, you know what? If you're still watching, um, like, subscribe. You, you've probably already done that if you're still watching. Leave a comment saying, um, horseradish is delicious. Okay, bye.